it is not unusual to hear that the gypsy moth is a destructive insect that defoliates and kills trees, endangering our environment, economy, and the beauty of our landscapes. Oaks, aspens, birches, and willows are their most common hosts. Gypsy moth caterpillars emerge from fluffy egg masses in the middle to late spring. As they mature, they become easily identifiable by their distinctive hairy bodies, yellow head, and a telltale pattern of five pairs of blue spots followed by six pairs of red spots along their back. Full-grown caterpillars will reach about one and a half to two and a half inches in length. Look for them on or near potential host plants, especially if defoliation is observed and leaves have been devoured down to the midrib. By midsummer, the caterpillars pupate for about two weeks before emerging as adults. Adult males are tan to brown with dark wavy bands and are about one inch long and one inch wide when not in flight. The larger flightless females are an off-white color and are about half quarter inches long and three quarters inches wide. Midsummer, females begin to deposit their distinctive fluffy egg masses on trees or other outdoor surfaces. These range from brownish orange to white in color and remain through winter. Let's take a closer look at moths in general. Did you know that there might be 200,000 to 500,000 or even a million moth species. Because they're so understudied, no one really knows for sure. To put things in perspective, there could be 100 times as many moth species as there are bird species on the planet. That's a lot of moths out there. Moths are also oftentimes thought of as pests, but they're actually very important for humankind. They pollinate, they produce silk for clothing, they're oftentimes used by engineers to design drones, yet we take it for granted. Many beautiful forests around us might not be here if it weren't for pollinating insects like moths. Many people see the value of birds, plants, and animals, but think less of the role of insects such as moths. Moths are some of the most diverse and successful organisms on Earth, with an amazing diversity of colors and patterns. Some like the wood nymph moth, are patterned to look like a bird dropping in order to avoid predation. Moths are a major part of our biodiversity and play vital roles in the ecosystem, affecting many other types of wildlife, as well as other insects, spiders, frogs, toads, bats, and birds. In reality, moths are an important element of bats' meal. Moreover, moths play a vital role in telling us about the health of our environment. They are widespread, found in many different habitats and sensitive to change. Monitoring their numbers and ranges can provide clues to changes in our own environment due to pesticides, air pollution, and climate change. And that's not all, moths have fascinating life cycles. The species transformation from egg to caterpillar to insect pupa is one example that teaches our children about the wonders of nature. Unfortunately, not all moths are benevolent. The United States government concluded that the gypsy moth will continue to be a severe problem after repeated failed attempts to control it. The gypsy moth is a leaf-eating insect. The damage caused by defoliating caterpillars makes this insect one of America's most destructive pests of trees and shrubs. The gypsy moth was introduced to Massachusetts from Europe in 1869 by the French amateur entomologist Etienne Leopold Trouvelot. While conducting breeding experiments, the insect escaped from his laboratory and became established on nearby vegetation. The infestation grew slowly, and local residents noticed defoliation when the first outbreak occurred 10 years after its initial introduction. In the early 1900s, a federal quarantine was placed on all trees in the infested area. Nurseries wanting to transplant trees from the quarantined area had to conduct a thorough inspection to ensure the moth wasn't hitching a ride. Quarantine restrictions kept the moth isolated in the New England region for decades. Since its introduction, the gypsy moth has slowly spread westward from New England despite efforts to control this pest. 
the gypsy moth's ability to feed and survive on more than 300 types of trees and woody plants, and a lack of natural predators has allowed this pest to invade North America's hardwood forests. Moths, we can all agree, are pollinators. They come to flowers and use their proboscis, or tongue, to drink nectar from the blossoms. They also pollinate the flower, resulting in the development of seeds and fruit. So, there might not be as many fruits on the planet if it weren't for moths. Moths are also important for the production of silk. The domesticated silk moth has a caterpillar that produces a lot of silk for its cocoon. And humans have known this for thousands of years and have used silk to create clothes. This domestication process has actually been going on for so long that the moths can no longer be found in the wild. In fact, they've gotten so big that the moths can no longer fly. Other species of moths are now being studied to create synthetic materials for humankind. Moths are also important for medicine. In the high snow-covered peaks of the Himalayas, leaves a moth known as ghost moth, which has a caterpillar that's associated with an unusual fungus called Cordyceps. And this fungus is one of nature's most unusual creations. And it's highly prized by locals because it's thought to cure SARS and also function much like Viagra. Moths are very useful in the field of engineering. The silver-spotted skipper, for example, has a caterpillar that has been the subject of research at Georgetown University by Dr. Martha Weiss. And Dr. Weiss has discovered that these caterpillars can shoot poop really far. In fact, it's equivalent to a 76-yard football field goal. Now, that's quite some distance. So, the anus of this caterpillar has been the focus of research on projectile physics. To understand how devices can shoot objects really far, Scientists have said that the poop of caterpillars is actually beautiful. Isn't that quite interesting? The poop is called frass and actually has beautiful intricate shapes around it. And it looks three-dimensional and is gorgeous. If you put several of them next to each other, some of them even look like flowers. Imagine having a picnic under a tree in the middle of a forest. You may think you're hearing rainfall falling from the sky, but these are actually the noises of excrement falling from the caterpillars overhead. And the amount of poop that these caterpillars produce is so substantial that it's important for the ecosystem and for the soil's health. However, one of the most important roles that these moths play in terms of interactions with other organisms is as food for another increasingly vulnerable group of animals, bats. Researcher Dr. Jesse Barbara at Boys State University has shown that bats use sonar or ultrasound to hunt moths, and moths have evolved numerous counter strategies to evade these predators. They can hear the sounds, allowing them loop and dive, and can actually move away from the predator. Chemical defenses are used by other moths, such as tiger moths. They also have a structure in the thorax behind the leg which emits ultrasound to the bat. As a result, they can effectively communicate with the bat and inform them that they are chemically guarded and distasteful. So, the bats avoid these moths because they can hear the moth and associate them with bad taste. Hawk moths can use their genitals to jam the sonar of bats, according to research conducted in collaboration with Dr. Barbara. Are you puzzled as to how this is even possible? This is how it works. If you look closely at a male hawk moth's genitals, you'll notice claspers that are used to grasp the female during mating. When it detects a bat in the sky, however, this structure produces ultrasound by sending out signals. As a result, the moth can create a massive wall of noise, making it difficult for the bat to locate the moth's specific location in the night sky. The spectacular long tails of American moon moths and relatives are also known to fool bats. And the twisted tails make it appear like a small fluttering moth, and the bats attack that tail and bite it off while the rest of the moth flies away. Insects like moths are quickly disappearing. We don't know why, but we believe it's due to pollution, lighting, noise, and climate change.
all of which are contributing to the extinction of these fascinating and vital insects. But that's a story for another day. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching.